Guess what? From the time, you are born till the time you turn 30, your muscles continue to grow bigger and stronger. But at some point, in your 30s, you will begin to lose muscle mass and function. Did you know after you turn 30, your body loses 1% of muscle every year and this is called sarcopenia? What is sarcopenia? As medically defined, sarcopenia is the gradual loss of muscle mass, function and strength. This happens as you age. Sarcopenia impacts your quality of life as the loss of muscle mass and strength will reduce your ability to perform daily tasks. In other words, it greatly impacts your musculoskeletal system and is one of the major factors behind your falls and fractions. Something that will let you end up in a hospital. Talking about muscle loss, do you know people who are physically inactive can lose up to 5% of their muscle mass each decade after the age of 30? If you are relaxed listening to this, know that, even if you are active, you will still go through some muscle loss. One thing to remember here is that there is no specific test or any particular level of muscle mass that will help you or your practitioner diagnose sarcopenia. Nevertheless, any loss of muscle matters because it will automatically lessen your strength and mobility. And nobody would want that. To understand sarcopenia better, let's quickly take a look at its symptoms and causes. Symptoms of sarcopenia. Weakness. Loss of stamina. Reduced activity that in turn shrinks your muscle mass. Causes of sarcopenia. As mentioned before, sarcopenia is more common in people who are inactive, yet it is also prevalent in individuals who are physically active. Are you wondering why do physically active individuals develop sarcopenia? Well, common sense points that there must be other factors in its development. As per research, these include the following. Not being able to get enough calories or protein each day in order to sustain muscle mass. A decrease in the ability to convert protein into energy. Hormones like testosterone, growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor are in lower concentration. There is a reduction in the nerve cells that are responsible for sending signals from the brain to the muscles in order to start movement. So how do you treat sarcopenia? While medicines are not a favorable option in treating sarcopenia, Though hormone supplements are under study, the best treatment for sarcopenia is exercise. And when we say exercise we are referring to weight training or you may call it as resistance or strength training. One interesting fact that we would like to point here is that yoga or aerobics will not help build muscles. You don't need to worry if you are a yoga or an aerobics enthusiast. Our purpose is to share the correct information with you so that you are factually aware about your health. Now since we have touched upon the link between yoga and strength training, many of you must be stuck upon the thought that. Can yoga build muscles? Well, simply put, yoga is more than building muscles. It is rather a practice that is rooted in spirituality and lifestyle rather than a mere workout. And that is why yoga focuses on poses, asana, and breath, pranayama. And the benefits of yoga that are well documented revolves around its ability to yield better flexibility and mobility along with a range of motions, including stability, balance and coordination. It is also known to strengthen your muscles and joints, boost your emotional and mental health and improve the mind-body-breath connection. But still, the question remains, does yoga build muscles? To answer this, it is important to understand how to build muscles and adapt your yoga practice to suit your muscle sculpting goals better. So, there are two processes, hypertrophy which is known as growing muscle and second, building strength. And both are equally important when it comes to physical health. But hey wait, in the absence of heavy weights like the dumbbells, kettlebells, or barbells, yoga is unlikely to develop your top end strength. Still, you can get stronger, and there are ways to build muscle, although we need to get technical first to understand how both work. Strength training develops maximal strength and power output, how strong your muscles are. Think about powerlifters and how do they do their reps. Their weightlifting process helps their brain more efficient at recruiting muscles improving their neuropathways hence making them more strong and powerful, yet not necessarily sculpting the muscles. So, in other words, yoga is unlikely to develop maximal strength. Hypertrophy training increases the size of your muscle fibers and requires a different set of training principles. You'll lift lighter, at a percentage of your 1 rep max, and increase the overall volume of your training instead, using a technique called progressive load. So, you help your muscles adapt and grow. Now since we have laid the foundation what building muscle involves, let's answer will yoga build muscles? Well, it's not simple, 
but you can do it, as long as your muscles can consistently meet with challenges and you can tap into overload techniques. Without weights, sets, or reps, sufficient progressive overload is harder to achieve because yoga provides a great mix of isometric and isotonic contractions, creating tension in the muscles without them lengthening or shortening, isometric, like a plank hold, and with movement, isotonic, like moving from upward dog to downward dog, along with pushing exercises, balances and inversions. Yogis can be a pretty sculpted bunch, especially in the arms, shoulders, chest, core and legs. However, building muscles through yoga is a tough deal. You need the overload principle to guide your practice that includes using the time under tension technique, progressing the exercise, increasing the frequency and speed, and opting for a faster paced yoga style. You can treat sarcopenia via exercise and to be specific, the treatment lies in resistance or strength training. Why? Because these activities increase muscle strength and endurance because of using weights and resistance bands. Moreover, research suggests that resistance training also helps your neuromuscular system and hormones. And thus, you can actually improve an older adult's ability to convert protein into energy in less than two weeks. One thing to note here is the proper frequency and intensity of resistance exercise is significant in getting the maximum benefit out of it with the least risk of injury. For this reason, try working with an experienced trainer or a physical therapist who would help devise a proper exercise plan. Now we have been talking about muscles so let's take a closer look at it. First, let us understand that. How does the body build muscles? When the muscle protein synthesis exceeds muscle protein breakdown that is when muscle building occurs. Having said that, protein is an important component of muscles that may be a part of your diet and exercise. So, think protein as individual bricks and consider muscle protein synthesis as the process of adding those bricks to a wall. In contrast, muscle protein breakdown is the process of taking those bricks away. So, if you lay more bricks than what you take away, you shall see the wall grow larger and if you take more than what you add, the wall will automatically shrink. Thus, to build muscle, your body must get more protein than what it removes. Now how is that possible? The answer lies in exercise specifically weight lifting as it is a strong stimulus for muscle protein synthesis. Although, exercise causes muscle protein breakdown, but the increase in muscle protein is greater that eventually leads to net muscle gain. So now we all know that our muscles grow when the body synthesizes more protein than what it breaks down. Now coming back to sarcopenia that occurs as you turn 30. Let's shed some more light upon gaining muscles as you age. Gaining muscle mass by lifting weights. Did you know that resistance exercise like weight training is one of the best ways to reverse the loss of muscle mass as you age? Interestingly, it applies for both the genders as you lose muscle mass because of the fluctuating levels of your testosterone and estrogen hormones as you age. While there is no way to fully stop the clock, it's possible for many older adults to increase muscle strength with exercise, which can help maintain mobility and independence into later life. Thus, increase the amount of muscles by making strength training a part of your routine up to four times a week. In addition to building mass, strength training improves flexibility, reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease, keeps you active and helps you beat obesity and at the same time it helps lower your blood sugar levels. Looking at the various benefits of strength training, the Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans 2015 to 2020 suggests that adults should engage in muscle strengthening exercises that involve all major muscle groups at least twice weekly. So, the more weight we contract against, the faster we shall see our bodies to burn through the reserves of the molecule that carries energy to the cells, adenosine triphosphate (ATP). And as we lift, our ATP reserves are replenished through a complex coordinated metabolic and chemical response that cascades through the entire body. This stimulates the short-term chemical changes in the DNA of muscle tissue that make them more tuned to specific proteins supporting sugar and fat metabolism. Fielding is thus, of the opinion the best way to improve physical function as we age is via a combination of walking and resistance training. The important characteristic of Fielding is the fact that he doesn't talk or just merely conduct research, instead he himself is a strong advocate of strength training. Did you know you can also gain muscle mass using endurance bands? If you do not like weights, you can start training with different levels of resistance bands that are actually shaped like a rubber band slash tube. 
And guess what? It is rather an inexpensive way for people over 50 to start fighting off the effects of aging by building their muscle mass. Now since we are talking about muscle gain, it is important to look at the factors that stop you from gaining muscle mass. Let's discuss the most important ones. You don't rest. Rest is an important part of recovery. When it comes to weight training, as you lift weights, you experience micro tears. This is why we focus on resting as rest days allow these fibers to rest and grow stronger which eventually leads to muscle hypertrophy and strength gains. Now there is one thing that goes hand in hand with rest and that is overtraining. This is a highly misunderstood concept and it is not inclusive to workouts alone. This is because overtraining is linked to environmental, emotional and chemical stressors and overexercising is just a part of the puzzle that leads to overtraining. Now all the stressors mentioned causes fatigue and basically overstimulates your central nervous system. This in turn leads to a decreased recovery and a negative hormonal response. When you are stressed, your body releases more cortisol that results in systemic inflammation and a reduction in testosterone levels. For this reason, we advise you to take adequate rest and sleep as it may negatively affect your body when you are trying to build muscle. Using too much weight and bad form. Try and recall your trainer as he continuously says, do not compromise on your form. Still wondering what is it all about? Well, we know the importance of weight lifting but in order to build muscles you need weight that is heavy enough to stimulate muscle growth. Remember, in order to build muscle, you need to use a heavier weight than your body is accustomed to in order to increase strength and stimulate growth. To achieve this, it is vital to master a move with a lighter weight, then progress to a heavier weight when you're ready. It is however, your bad form, the pain that you feel beyond that typical soreness or too heavy weight that results in an injury. Therefore, never be afraid to seek help and do not compromise on your form. Not eating right or enough. Not eating right or enough. Although a dietitian will advise you the best on dietary specifics especially when you are exercising as well, it is a general rule that you have to consume enough calories in order to create a state of anabolic growth. Now for example if you are consuming 1500 calories in a day and you are burning more than 2000 calories, you won't be able to gain muscle. So, you basically end up defeating the purpose of strength trainings. So, friends, if you are about to celebrate your 30th birthday, get ready for the health challenges you will face. As mentioned earlier, remember, after you turn 30, your body loses 1% of muscle every year. This loss of muscle mass is known as sarcopenia and we have already discussed it in detail. And to treat this, to gain muscle as you age, strength training especially weight lifting will help you the most in fighting against the muscle loss that occurs as you age. We hope you learned a lot from our video. Share it with others so that they know what happens to their muscles as they age. We would love to know how often you strength train and what difficulties do you face when you exercise. We will wait for your answer in comments. Until then, keep lifting.